Jamaat e Islami and the Bangladesh Nationalist Party have a decades old alliance. Indeed, Jamaat is thought to hold swing power in elections, and both major parties have long sought to court it. This photograph from the mid 1990s shows a Jamaat leader sitting a few seats down from Sheikh Hasina at a press conference. The Awami League at the time was looking for allies to create a caretaker government, but Sultan Sharif is adamant that the seating arrangement was a pure accident. Where the opposition leader was having a meeting with all the members of various political parties. In the middle of the meeting, the leader was sitting somewhere, where in his room, somebody from the Jamaat entered and, and another person made, stood up from the chair and gave him a place to sit. That was about five minutes situation. Jamaat -e Islam enjoys a large support from the international Muslim communities. Some say their leaders' trials, convictions and any sentencing would cause outrage across the Muslim world. Indeed, one commentator says the Bangladeshi government is playing a dangerous game of extreme secularism against Islam. What I have seen in Bangladesh is there are three camps. A group of people who are in the middle, indifferent. They're not bothered by either. Then you've got the secular fundamentalists, the current government, and the Shabak uprising, those who are leading that. I call them secular fundamentalists. They hate the religion. They want to banish Islam from the fabric of Bangladesh. They want to hang the Muslim scholars. They want to close down madrasas. They want to do everything against Islam. I call them secular fundamentalists. They are bad news for us, bad news for the whole world and civilization at large. And the third group are the religious people. Some of them are political and some of them are not. Jamaat Islami is claiming to be religious and political. I have my differences with Jamaat's approach when it comes to politics and religion in Bangladesh. But what I don't like is secular fundamentalists imposing an intolerant view on Bangladeshis that hates religion and wants to banish religion from public discourse forever. I, don't, I can't stand that. And I'll stand and debate and argue and protest against it until I breathe last. Secular fundamentalists are educated in the sense that they're educated in the secular realms of life. They're so stupid in their understanding of Islam is that they don't know what is the difference between Islam and Jamaat Islami. Islam is a religion, a lifestyle, a choice that you make with devotion to God. Jamaat Islam is a political party. There is no connection. They could be representing Islam, but they may not be. But to collude the two, secular fundamentalists in Bangladesh are so deluded and delusional about Islam, it's just beggar's belief. Now I am more uh, uh, encouraged by the people respond to ban the Jamaat Islam. The religious parties in Bangladesh, they did all the atrocities and everything in the name of religion. So I personally believe as a secular minded person, as a practicing Muslim in private life, can do a lot better. Some of your main leaders uh, have now been imprisoned, have been given the death sentence have been given life imprisonment. Will this be the end of your party? Definitely not. Um, Joma, uh, by killing, by judicial killing of uh, 10, 15 people, uh, the party which has a big support in Bangladesh, and, and uh, the enemy of Islam cannot expect that uh, Jamaat Islami will be wiped out from the political scenario of Bangladesh. It will be, it will be foolishness to expect. Amidst all the political wrangling, it's easy to forget that a group of men remain imprisoned under conditions human rights campaigners say are below international standards. One of those men is Ghulam Azam, the founder and former leader of jamaat e islami He is 90 years old, but his son says his faith in God will get him through the next few months. My parents had their Diamond Jubilee anniversary just before he got arrested. Um, so we, um, I, I was able to speak to him uh, Immediately, I mean, just a few days before he was arrested. Uh, but uh, now we, he's, we are not allowed to speak, uh, naturally. He's in, a j in jail. Only my, my mother and one of my brothers, who is in, 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 in Bangladesh, they are uh, uh, able to see him, you know, once in a fortnight for, for half an hour. So, yes, I'm, I would have, I've not been speaking to him. For Do you know what his condition is like? Do you know what, how his spirits are right now? <sighs> Alhamdulillah, his spirit is strong. He's, 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 he's never been you know, afraid. Before he got arrested, people asked him questions. He gave very long interviews. And he said that, well, I'm not worried about me. And he said to his uh, you know, followers or you know, supporters that, 
don't worry about us. Um, we are, uh, you know, if we die, we'll die. If Allah decides our death uh, 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 in their hands, we will die. Bangladesh said it set up this so-called war crimes tribunal to attain a justice that was long overdue. But instead, it now risks being labelled forever unjust. As the court hears another defence team's closing remarks this week, the streets outside reverberate with the noise of protesters and the echoes of gunfire. What should have been a country healing a 42-year-old wound together has instead turned country men against each other and created an instability that risks the future of Bangladesh. One after another, men fight to prove their innocence in a 21st century court. While the rest of the world protests to topple autocratic regimes, youth in Bangladesh appear to be doing quite the opposite. Their support of Sheikh Hasina's beleaguered Awami League party may end up being detrimental to their country's progress and to justice. Passionate and emotional, but have they forgotten what their fathers died for?